All right, hey everybody, welcome to True Stream. Today I'm here with the one and only Masei Seki from Imaginism Studios. Hey guys. Right on. Good and uh, today I want to start off with one of the questions from <laughs> last time. And actually, you know, a bunch of the questions from last time. There are a lot that weren't answered. So the very first one is, hey Bobby, how long did you prepare your studio before launching? Do you have tips before starting one? Um, so... I figure I'd just tell the story of how we started and, and you can take the lessons from there, okay? So good and the bad, right? So um, the most important thing was I didn't just uh, quit my job and start the studio. You know, when you're trying to go from one way of life to another way of life, uh, you need to kind of build a bridge. It, I kind of see it as two you know, pieces of land and you need to build a bridge or else you're going to have to swim through shark infested waters and it's going to be way more dangerous. <laughs> um, so, you know, save up as much as you can, start developing a clientele of freelance, you know, clients, whatever that might be. Um, that really helped. Okay. Then have a plan, right? So the plan was, okay, we're going to make a studio and we're gonna make it very lean at very at the very 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 first uh, maybe the first month of the studio it was we we're just planning on having it in our, our parents basement me and my brother because rent is free and so <laughs> you know that was that was one of the plans and the other plan was well we felt that we had an advantage. With every disadvantage that you feel you have, there's always an advantage in there somewhere. And the advantage was that we have no jobs. And well, how is that an advantage? You, you're you probably wondering. Well, it's because, you know, people with jobs, people, you know, at studios, they're busy. They got no time to do their own stuff. Perhaps they might make their own book uh, once every year hopefully maybe once every two years maybe once every three years maybe even longer than that because people are busy so what do we what did we do we said we're gonna make a new book every three months we're just gonna do independent art because we have you know very little jobs and we had an ultimate goal you know, when you make an art book, you have to also think about how are you going to sell this art book? It can't just be online, especially back then. It couldn't be online, you know, just online because people were still paranoid about PayPal. You know, so we thought, okay, we're going to spend this year, we're going to, you know, eat ramen every day <laughs> and make independent art and make four books. And, you know, one every th three months. By the end of it, it'll be July. We're going to go to San Diego Comic-Con. We got a table um, and we went. We went to San Diego Comic-Con with our four books. Now, the idea was that, you know, you're going to be tons of very established artists. How do we make ourselves look quite established as well? Well, that's with content, you know. So we had four books, 72 pages each. There's a lot of content, so it looks like we've been around forever. But no, it's just because we didn't really have any jobs. We've only been around for a year. And we go to Comic Con, show our stuff, and what do people want to see? They want to see people that they can trust, meaning they feel like these people are very established. They know what they're doing, and they want to see something refreshing and new yet not so refreshing that's like I, I can't even relate to it anymore you know so that was the plan of starting our studio and that's how come it worked we had an ultimate goal of getting to san diego comic-con and uh making our presence felt in a way where we felt established how we get there, well, we had a loose plan. We, you know, make four <laughs> books, whatever. Um, but the plans will change. You know, so you make your plan, you make your ultimate goal, and your ultimate goal is like your compass. That's, that's the thing that will help to determine what you decide to do, uh, which thing you decide to go with, that kind of stuff. Like, what will get me closer to that ultimate goal? The route will always change. 
But if you have a really good goal, then it doesn't matter if the path changes or not. You'll always know where to go. So I hope that um, answered that question. Now let's burn through these other questions because there's a lot. And mm -hmm. for those of you that have joined us for the very first time, uh, you want to ask a question, you're just going to type in questions in capital letter, okay? Question. And then you're going to write your question and then we can write it down and we can answer it. So let's bust through these questions, Masay. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so Chris asks, uh, Hi, Bobby Masay. So glad to hear to be here and be able to talk to you guys. My question is about dark artistic times. Do you think that taking breaks a few days is important when you feel stuck? Definitely breaks, but don't long. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I like to go to familiar things, things that I know I can draw, you know, because why I, I am going through... Uh, dark artistic slumps. Uh, I talked about this a little bit last time, you know, it's just due to injury. And so with injury, uh, there were like months where I couldn't really draw that long anymore. And uh, then I just felt my skills slowly starting to deteriorate. So these paintings have been very therapeutic for me. It's just, you know, it's just looking at reference pretty much um, analyzing the reference, copying the reference, and just exercising my brain and, and just doing something fun that I know I can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like sharpening your skills as well, like applying all the knowledge that you know as well. Yes. Last week, uh, that one that one was more difficult than this one. You know, when I started painting this one for this week's uh, stream, it was... I could feel things starting to gel, starting to come back. So that was really great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's nice to do these like weekly paintings. Yeah. You know mm. what? It's been years. It's been years that I've been going through all these problems. So now I am so energized to kick <laughs> so much butt. 2017, you know, I feel like a lot of the new people they don't remember how I painted before and a lot of the stuff I painted before I couldn't even show because they're for older movies so I'm coming back yeah. coming back <laughs> that's awesome okay so the next question is by Mr. Sumsum uh, is there a way to know you're in the right way how can one know that he improves constantly check your logic I don't know like for me it's always like Take a step back, look at the whole entire picture, kind of like from the third person point of view. Think about if I keep heading down this direction, where am I going to be in five years? Or mm -hmm. in five years, am I going to regret the decision that I'm about to make? Or am I going to be happy about it? Mm -hmm. So you always want to check with yourself. Yeah, often. yeah, definitely. What, what do you do? Huh, <laughs> I'm actually not... Sure. Well, you know what? You're going on the right path. Yeah, I feel like I am. I mean, I have a great mentor Thank in the studio you. and then good people surrounding me. Well, always supportive. my main goal for you is to try to make whatever it is you want your ultimate goal to be, mm -hmm. to make that happen, to help support and try to, you know, so for all the employers out there, that's what I recommend you should do as well, you know, because... You want the people that work with you to be with you for a very long time, especially really great people. And really great people will go away if you are not trying to really bring out their, their potential mm -hmm. and having them, helping them reach their goals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next question is by Amal. <clears throat> How do you convince my dad that I can make a living out of art and drop out of architecture school? <laughs> Yeah, so with that, you know, let me tell you something, Dad, okay? <laughs> I had the same thing with my parents. They just want the best for me. But it's your, you know, it's it's my life that I'm going to have to live. And usually that's going to be years, years after, you know, Dad and Mom and whoever. Uh, so it really is about my happiness, right? And your happiness is what's going to take you to the upper echelons of whatever industry you're trying to get to. If you're not happy doing whatever it is you are doing, you will never get there. Mm -hmm. You won't. Because I wake up excited 
you know, 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning to get to work, right? I'm excited, hang out with you like late at night, <laughs> painting away. Yeah. You know, I love it. If I didn't love it, I it, it wouldn't last, you know, over 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to see yourself like being like, I can still imagine myself sitting in the same chair doing the same, like not the same thing, but you know, painting and like being excited for it every single time. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? Like, um, okay. A lot of, you know, concept artists and, you know, artists working in movies, especially movies, especially live action movies, they make a ton of money, you know, like it's very good, it, it, you know, comparatively to what was the other thing that he wanted to his dad wanted him to do? I forget. Architecture. architecture? Yeah. It's absolutely it would absolutely um, be comparable to being a great architect i kid you not you know you're dealing with projects that are hundreds of millions of dollars you think you get paid peanuts <laughs> you know you could tell your dad that yeah and you can like show him all the artworks that people are actually doing right now and you can be like this is what i can become mm. if i showed my dad that he wouldn't understand <laughs> yeah. you know my dad is more like or just bring up his favorite movies and be like you know that that was done by artists. Yeah, and then they might say, well, those people are way better than you. How are you ever going to get there, right? Well, you know, like uh, everybody that I've interviewed, and you could check them out on, you know, Imaginism Studio, or on the schoolism.com uh, site, free hundred, more than a hundred interviews. What do they all have in common? They all didn't, think that much of them their their stuff at one point or another you know they all came from not being able to paint and draw right so everybody started from the same darn place and we're all on the same path mm -hmm. yeah I just keep learning you know mm -hmm. just about everything will also change in a person's average lifespan mm -hmm. you know when I was when I was a little kid uh, buying water was like the dumbest thing in the world. Why would you buy water? There's like, water yeah. coming straight out of the tap. You know, just put it in a bottle. Or um, thinking that television will die? What? <laughs> but it totally is. You know, all these things. So many things that I learned in school are not applicable in the industry now. You know, and industries themselves will come and go. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Oh. Stream is offline. Is it offline? I think that might just be my oh, computer okay. here. Yeah, it's oh, still okay, going. Okay, it's going. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh the next question is um by Anji Kun. Um any advice for aspire indie game artists slash developers? Mm. Well, I don't do any indie games. Um, we developed an app that did very well. Yeah. Um, the Nico and the Sword of Light uh, animated comic book app. Uh, again, it's it's all about strategy. With these big goals, like creating an app, and you want to make you know millions of dollars from it and things like that. Big goals. You want to start from the end, you know, and uh, work your way backwards. So, how would you want the end to be? You know, you're kicking butt you're making all this you know sales and you know it's allowing you to make even more apps and you know your life is awesome mm -hmm. well how did you get there what did you how many hours did you work in a day you know what were your priorities were you playing overwatch all day <laughs> probably not you know think about it get into the details of it and start to embody that change yourself and it'll change your situation. Not only that, but it'll change the people in the world around you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the next question is by Natalie. Uh, is there any aspect of art that you often see neglected, especially in inspiring artist works? What would you say is the most important thing to master in art? Those are two totally different questions. So one, what should you master? Technical skills, if you want to do 
anything in the realm of what I'm doing, technical skills are a must. Then what do people neglect? I feel they really, a lot of them, they neglect the idea. Mm. The technical skills only help you to, uh, you know, make the idea happen, to bring it into fruition, right? And a lot of people, they don't really think about the ideas nearly as much. And everything should actually start off with the idea. And then you use all your technical skills aimed towards making that idea happen. Mm -hmm. And it's that emotional connection. Yes, with, the, say, with the viewer. Totally. That's, yeah. the highest, uh, that's the highest level of art mm -hmm. is the emotional impact that the person will have looking at your paintings mm -hmm. right on. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is by Neon Knight. Do you think it's possible to become a real professional if you start your art way later when you're 25 years old, or is it too late to learn? 25? Is that <laughs> way later? Oh my gosh. You know, let's put it this way. Uh, Jason Seiler, incredible, you know, masterful illustrator, he teaches a course called The Art of Character. Well, there was a man that took his class. Uh, he always wanted to be an artist or he liked art, never did it professionally, went through his life as something else, and then retired. What do people do when they retire? They go after their passion, right? So then he takes a class, starts learning from Jason. The man is over 65 years old. And by the end of the course, the guy is totally kicking butt and started to get jobs. That's started so to get awesome. jobs in a completely new profession. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. As a retired you know, person, artist that is just starting to become an artist. That is, that's absolute proof, you know. But the hardest thing I find is that we're not used to sitting there and learning anymore, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're in school, you're used to sitting there and learning for like eight hours a day or something. Yeah. Still might be tiring, but we all do it. Now, try to sit there and learn for eight hours a day. It's way harder, you know, unless you keep that learning going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard, and then there's a lot of like distractions mm -hmm. there waiting for you, or responsibilities. Responsibilities stick on you like yeah. like glue as you, yeah. we tumble through life. Yep. So it's a lot of uh, managing and making that time, like making a really big effort to, you know, learn and get better. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing is for that person that's really old, you know, twenty five years old. I want to tell that old man, I want to tell him, or old woman, I want to tell you that you got to believe in yourself, that you're important. If you believe that you are important, and if you believe that you were meant for a purpose, that makes a huge difference, and that would make a huge difference in the result than if you were thinking, hmm... I'm not that special. I'm not going to really get anywhere. It's not like you act like a diva or something and I'm super important, but it's just more like that little thing inside where you just tell yourself, I'm important. I'm important, Bobby. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just need that like little push for your for yourself. Um so the next question is by David uh, he asks, are there seasons or times in which you are more likely to hire artists for projects? Or, uh, sorry, and where do you find the people you consider hiring? My mission with Schoolism.com is to make a place and a moment in time that will go down in art history, where all the best artists in the industry came together to teach the world, turbocharging art itself by making art education affordable and accessible to all artists everywhere. 
whether it's through critique sessions that comes with fantastic lesson videos, assignments, and personal drawovers from the people that you're learning from, like Luis Gonzalez, Nathan Fawkes, or Terrell Whitlatch herself, giving you feedback videos on your own assignments. Or you can do it through Schoolism subscriptions, our most affordable way to learn. For the price of a dinner a month, you would get exactly the same as the critique sessions, but you don't get the personal feedback from your instructor. However, you do get to watch the instructor's feedback videos on everybody else's assignments, and you get to go at your own pace. This is especially good for people with jobs or busy schedules. Where do professionals go to further their education? Schoolism.com. Check it out. See why, because you'll be glad you did. Like for me, there is no real best time to find people or whatever. Yeah, there's no real like schedule here, right? Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of all over the place. There's always something <laughs> new happening and stuff like that. Yeah. Where do I go to find people? Generally, best case scenario is either people that I already knew from the past or people that um that other people in the studio already know. Yeah, recommendations yes. are always and the best. Sometimes uh, there's been times where it's like through stuff like the schoolism house, like the yeah. schoolism workshop house, um, the 30 day, it's like in house, you're living there just outside of Montreal in St. Julien in this big old house, you know, and you're there for 30 days. That's really great because everybody can fake it, fake being a nice person or whatever for five minutes, even a few hours or a few days. Yeah can't do it with for 30 days especially with pressure and all that stuff and it's a really great way to get to know uh you know artists and stuff like that and i can see you know like there's noah in the stream she went to the schoolism house and mm -hmm. then we took her to what was it was the it? london berlin workshop yeah london berlin workshop yeah. where you know she helped us out and and everything and before you know it she's sitting down eating with you know all these amazing artists, artists and stuff yeah all right next question okay uh the next question is actually by noah oh um the best teachers i know are those who are those with a lot of experience in work and teaching what would be your advice for those interested in starting to teach but afraid of being bad teachers just make sure like you're being very honest with your students you know i think too many teachers pretend that they know stuff that they don't it's totally okay to say you know like uh i don't know that right now mm -hmm. that's an interesting question and perhaps i will get you know okay i'll find out or it's an interesting question you leave it at that and you go <laughs> I, I don't really know mm -hmm. um just make sure that you're teaching people that can really benefit from whatever it is it, whatever knowledge you have don't fake it though if you fake it and I find out, I'm going to point that finger at you and go, why are you, why are you doing that? <laughs> you know, that's one of my huge pet peeves with the whole system, you know, of education and stuff. There's way too many imposters. Yeah, there's been teachers where they try to teach a course that they are not, you know, they're not uh, experienced in. Yeah, they don't specialize in yeah, it and stuff like that. Yeah, they don't specialize, yeah. Okay, uh, then, oh, sorry, did you want to say something? Oh, I, I was going to just say, like, uh, but it isn't always the teacher's fault. A lot of mm -hmm. times it is the system. It, it, you know, it is, yeah. They're part of the union. They, they're they already part of the union, and their class gets cut out, and it's like, what do you teach now? Well, you know, maybe you could teach uh, life drawing. Well, I don't do life drawing. Well, uh, just do it anyways. Well, yeah, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be unemployed, so, yeah, I'm going to yeah, do it. Yeah, I had a teacher like that, and he's amazing at painting, but he was kind of forced to do life drawing. He's still a really good life drawing teacher, just I think he would have been a better painting teacher. Totally, totally. Yeah. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Casey. Uh, where do I find info on your on where your workshops are going to be? Schoolism.com. Next. Next. The Daydream Factory. Uh, most artists tell you to get art friends, and normally I'm pretty good around people, but if I know... I would like to get to know an artist better. I just get so socially awkward. So what can I do? 
Yes, yes. That's artists a, being socially of, awkward, right? A lot of artists. Trust me, you are normal. <laughs> I was also very socially awkward when I first started off because you're not used to talking to groups and stuff like that. Um, how I did it was you just keep jumping in that fire. And every time you do, you come out, maybe you come out burned, you know, you, you, in other words, you jump in that fire, meaning like, uh, oh, there's Mike Mignola. I really want to talk to Mike Mignola, but I'm so nervous. <laughs> and then you tell your feet, okay, feet, we are freaking doing this one step at a time. And we're going to march up to him and we're going to either crash or burn or totally make an awesome impression and just do it, you know? And then if you crash and burn, then whatever, you know? you think logically about what you did right or wrong mm -hmm. and then you do it again um the other thing is i'll give you a couple tips for people that are a bit more high profile uh if you want to go meet them and stuff try not to say i love your work it looks just like so and so's oh that's that's <laughs> such a pet peeve mm -hmm. for pretty much every artist oh yeah your your artwork it's really nice uh looks just like tom so and so do you know his work? Do you know her work? It's like, are you saying I'm a rundown version of that yeah, or something? Yeah. You know, I know that that's not what people uh, they don't mean it. Think, yeah, yeah, but that's how it feels on the other end. Uh huh. Yeah, and then also, you know, my favorite stuff that you did was blah blah blah, and it was from like 20 years ago. Ugh. Oh, it's like, <laughs> so <laughs> I hit my peak 20 years ago. You know, we met. Um, I met Morpheus one time, uh, Lawrence Fishburne in Florence. Just, you know, happenstance, having dinner at the same place. I see Morpheus, I'm like, everybody, oh my goodness, that's Morpheus, right? And then um, we go up to him, I, you know, talk to him. Do I say, Lawrence Fishburne, oh my goodness, Morpheus, the Matrix changed my life? No, you don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> You say, what are they up to now? So mm -hmm. I said, at the time, it was Hannibal. I was like, oh, actually, no, this wasn't me. This was actually another uh, ex-Schoolism House workshop st uh, student that is now part of, um, or is in the process of becoming part of Imaginism full time. She says to him, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry you died. <laughs> right? And then we're like, you know, we're all a little surprised, but Lawrence Fishburne, he knows what's up. He knows that she's talking about Hannibal, the series. Mm -hmm. And he goes, don't worry. You know, I'm here in Florence <laughs> for a reason. And right beside him is Hannibal. They're having dinner together, right? And so that was really nice just to say something more up to date. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you can tell that the person's actually like, knowing like acknowledging that person for what they're doing now yes before it's like that was me like 20 years ago like move on yeah <laughs> i have better things yeah exactly yeah. exactly okay so the next question is um by christina which course would you recommend for someone who struggles with form and three dimension 3d three dimensionality in their art Ooh, that's a good one um which one would you recommend? Um, that's a good question. I think Stevens. Steven Silver. Steven Silver's class is good. If you want, definitely like, talks about structure. Yeah, structure for character design. But then same with uh, John Hardesty. You yeah. know, Essentials of Realism. Same with uh, so many others. You know, structure is something that kind of umbrellas everything, mm -hmm. like most things. You know, when you're dealing with color and light, can you learn color and light without structure? No, yeah. not really. Even if you have like really nice lighting and stuff, if certain things don't make sense, like obviously you can cheat in certain areas in your painting, but there's always structures in really good artist paintings. Totally. So, you know, I think you would probably agree, Masse, our advice to you is learn from as many different people as possible mm -hmm. because that's what will shape you know a really awesome artist and don't just know it 
don't just watch the videos do Mm -hmm. do the assignments because knowledge is not power unless you know how to use it Mm -hmm. um so the next question is by james thompson or sorry james thomas will you have a comic book course on schoolism layout and sequential storytelling planning a graphic novel oh planning a graphic novel but i've never tried it i took the storyboard class already and it was great storyboard class i love chris pern he is one of my favorite people and the way that he teaches is phenomenal comic book course we had one way in the past with uh alvin lee alvin lee now works at riot games he doesn't do comic books anymore so you know he was like that's not me anymore and we're like yeah we agree and so we took it off Mm -hmm. um just haven't found the right person to do another comic book class because we're not just looking for people that know how to do comic books we're looking for the best of the best that can also teach yeah that's always very difficult comic books that's a tough job Mm-hmm. okay so the next question is by omar has bobby ever done animation stuff before i have i have <laughs> super stinky but I made two films. One was uh, this one called Don't Feed the Animals, where there's a homeless man in the zoo, and everybody's eating uh, food around him, and he's super hungry, and none of them are being nice to him and being kind to him, giving him any food, except for the monkey behind the bars that's watching the whole entire thing. At the end, he gives him a banana, and the homeless man is so grateful that he breaks the banana in half and gives a half back. Aww. <laughs> yeah, you know, that one, obviously, that talks very much about, there's a lot of similarities to the things I believe in as well. You know, the reason for giving is just as important as the gift itself. Mm-hmm. Kindness means so much more when you don't expect anything in return, like the monkey. Yeah. Didn't expect anything in return, and yet he got half a banana, and a whole new friend yeah (laughs) yeah the other uh animated movie the animated uh short that i did also horrible animation was um it was it was a computer animated version of one of my favorite sitcoms back in the day which is very like kind of (laughs) faux pas now but it was the cosby show i i made a computer animated version of the cosby show yeah there you go I remember that one. That was that was funny. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it too. I, enjoyed it. I didn't like the animation. Obviously the animation <laughs> looked horrible. I did enjoy it very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh so the next question is by Katie Jackson. Uh I want to ask what happened to Ian McKeg class. Yes, so Ian McKeg, what happened was um that's the thing about a lot of these teachers. They're very high profile, they get busy. So Ian McKegg, he got busy, but you got Bobby over here bugging him mm-hmm. constantly, just tapping him on the shoulder. Hey, what about that schoolism class? So uh, <laughs> we are back on it again, and I've been meeting with him regularly, and as long as that continues, then it looks like we'll have a class for next year by Ian McKegg himself. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's so exciting. I'm so excited. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. Okay, so the next question is by Francisco. Uh, hi guys, I don't know if you... Oh, this was from last week. Um, did you use reference for the drawing on the video? Or were you, were you visualizing... How do you say your name? P- Fandy? Oh, Fandy no. Fandy Newton? The yeah, actress. there's no way I could just visualize and like no reference bust that out. Just like this one is uh, Forrest Whitaker from uh, Rogue One. I never watched the movie yet, but I'm so excited about it. So I painted this. Yes, there's reference. um, And of course, because you got to get the likeness, Mm -hmm. you know, like dead on. If it's a character, then yeah, I could see, you know, more of like a cartoony character or something than I could see doing it without reference at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So the next question is... uh... Are there any class? Uh, sorry, Nick asks. Uh, are there any plans to add more courses geared towards animation, similar to character design for film animation, or even just animation courses? No plans. No plans. You know what I would recommend? Animation mentor. Mm-hmm. Those guys rock. Yeah. Bobby Beck. You know, he's awesome. He's a 
like if you don't know who Bobby Beck is, he worked on such movies as The Incredibles, Monsters Inc., uh, Finding Nemo, um, Toy Story 2, Cars, and then he left. He quit Pixar wow. to start Animation Mentor. Those are the best teachers, the ones that don't don't start teaching because they have to and they have no other options. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The best are the ones that have a million different options, like Ian McKegg, and yet he wants to give back and he wants to teach. Yeah. So big shouts out to Bobby Beck and Animation Mentor. You gotta check that out if you haven't heard of it. All the Bobbies are doing great things. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. You know there is a Another there Bobby? is a serial killer named Bobby Chu. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way back when we were first starting off, when I looked up my name, I would see this other guy and he was a freaking murderer oh. in California or something. Wow. Thank goodness that was a long time ago. And yeah. when you look up the name now, you just see yeah. my ugly face but and my paintings <laughs> and stuff. But uh, yeah, That's not crazy. every Bobby is good. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is by Linda's Art. Uh, I struggle with branching out from sketching and moving forward to developing a new finished idea. How do you escape from your sketchbook? Hey, you know, it seems like it's more like how do you escape your own mind? You know, because you could easily put down your sketchbook or, you know, start picking up some paints or whatever it is you want to do. Um, But a lot of times it's the battle with our minds that is the real challenge Mm -hmm. you know and the the scary part about it is that you can either take control of your mind or it will control you so practice and take control of that mind put those blinders on and focus in on whatever it is you want to do and stop thinking about everything else and just tell yourself stop thinking about everything else let's control the mind and let's stay on this path Okay, so the next question is by Rosalia. Um, I live in a far region where there is no art jobs at all. You said that it's important to visualize your goals, but when one lives far from an industry, how how can one learn what job they want? You know, that's that's not like uh, just for people that live far away from the industry and stuff like that. Um, it's for so many people because if you don't have actual experience in something, how do you know that you want it, right? Mm -hmm. Truth is in knowledge. To know exactly what you truly want, you have to know about it. You have to know in depth about it. Um, What I did was I just took my best guess at what I would like to do. I just started doing it, Mm -hmm. you know, long enough to learn it and do it relatively well and then you decide if you want to do that or not so that was like before characters i was doing layouts you know i was drawing backgrounds and that was my thing i love drawing backgrounds why because some other student that graduated recently uh got hired at disney for doing backgrounds so i'm like yeah okay backgrounds that's my thing (laughs) yeah so it could have been my thing but the good thing is that you do it until you get relatively good at it, and then you could decide. If you move on to something else, I guarantee you that thing that you learned that you're not specializing in will come back to help you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, so the next question is from Jerome. Uh, can you tell me what kind of skills and work is expected in a character design portfolio? Um, cracks in the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's not cracks uh, in the background. That's just uh, typing, because uh, we gotta copy the questions and stuff like that. Um, but so character design portfolio. Sorry, I totally. Oh, uh, what, what kind, kind of, of skills and work is expected in a character design portfolio? Well, of course, structure, mm-hmm. design sense, all that stuff. It's all necessary nowadays, technical skills in terms of, you know, color sense, design, uh, structure, uh, whatever else there might be. That's all absolutely necessary. The thing that will bring you above the rest is your ideas, Mm -hmm. you know, and 
obviously if it's a good idea then it's going to create an emotional impact to your viewers that is the exact emotional impact that you really want them to have and it's going to be a strong one mm. actually i have a question do you think that um make like taking a, a story like for example um a little red riding hood and then recreating that stories and the characters in it do you think that's a good idea just so you can kind of show yeah people what you can bring out in a story that's been done over and over again yeah absolutely how would you tell it and the thing is if you take a uh, copyright free book and you illustrate it can you print out a little red riding hood book yeah you can hmm. in the end you got a storybook yeah you know and especially if you want to go into children's books or even film, you know, that's a really great way to show your chops, you know, how you how you going to manage a story. Oh, I see. Just make sure that it is copyright free. Right. <laughs> yeah, because Don't. some things it's like um, like Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. That's an old story. Right. So, you know, when uh, I think Peter grabs Tinkerbell and sticks her in a little lamp. Yeah. Uh, and locks her in it. Ian McKegg was telling me this. He said, if you do a Peter Pan story where um, you take Tinkerbell and you lock her in the little lamp, you know, that's that's no good. Uh, Disney might, you know, if you do well, they could possibly sue you. But if you have Tinkerbell, you know, have Peter grab a cup, a glass cup, and then put it over Tinkerbell, then Disney won't sue you. You is know? that Disney's original idea? or is... Well, they switched it. They changed it, right? So oh. it's a lamp instead of a cup. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they hey. copyrighted that. That's cool. I you didn't, always I... learn a little something uh -huh. with these streams. <laughs> okay, so the next question is from Ed E. Um, I have a friend who thinks that no matter what I do with art, how good I get, the companies and the managers... And the way businesses are run will always be the same. Your thoughts? I think they're all hey. Okay. Uh, a long time ago, I forget who was telling me this. I think it was my dad. But he was just saying, you know, your heart and your mind are the doors to success and happiness. You got to keep them open or you're going to miss out on great opportunities. Mm -hmm. If I thought how your friend thought, I wouldn't have a studio. I wouldn't pursue uh, creating schoolism because before schoolism, there wasn't anything like schoolism. You know, so, but, you know, if nobody's doing it, how are you going to do it, Bobby? You live in Toronto. Well, it happened. <laughs> you know, it happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next question is by Mibblert. Uh, how do I manage my time and energy for making art? I'm in high school, and will you have a workshop in the Philippines? I would love to have a workshop in the Philippines. As you know, uh, my wonderful partner in life, Kea Sidera, uh, fantastic artist, she is from the Philippines. Um, so yeah, I, I've been there before, and every time I went, it, well, actually I've only been there once, sorry. But the, <laughs> the, only time I went, I had a really great time. So yeah, I would love to. What was the first part before? How do that? I manage my time and energy for making art? How do you manage your time and energy for making art? Well, for me, it's it was getting up earlier, you know. And also, a uh, good one is just to keep track of the things that you do during your day, and especially between the things that you're doing. What are you doing between this project and that project? You know, when you finish a little leg of the race, a lot of times we spend a good 15 minutes in between maybe asking other people, hey, take a look at what I just did. Or <laughs> go onto Facebook and, you know, like a bunch of stuff or whatever. Get a coffee. Don't. If you can, don't. If You know, like... If you're trying to find the time, those are the things that you do, you know, is to find the little slivers and it really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Mauricio. Uh, 
been searching for a Cintiq companion kind of product where I can have full Photoshop installed. Do you guys recommend Surface Pro 4 or other similar products for concept art? Mm, that's a really good one. Um, Surface Pro 4, I have not tried. Okay, I've tried uh, Vio Z Canvas. I've been messing with that for a good couple of months or so. Um, that one's nice. I like it for sketching. I don't do full-on paintings with it. Um, but it is a you know, full computer. You can have full Photoshop. The, the Wacom Companion, I love those as well, but for me, they're not portable in the sense where I would take it out sketching. You know, I would take it with me, set it up at my hotel or something, so I have a nice setup. Mm -hmm. That's definitely very great. Um, that's, that's all the knowledge I got. You know, I'll try to get my hands on a Surface Pro for, you know, perhaps in the future and test it out. And yeah, and do like a review. Yeah. Okay, um, the next question is by Crystal Hong. Uh, I've been learning a lot from schools and workshop. Will there be a set and prop design class or any new class coming up? There's tons of new classes coming mm. up. Um, this next year is going to be awesome. I quit, you know, working on movies to focus in on schoolism for at least a year. Uh, you know, I'm the whole entire mission is to make it the best artists in the world gathering together to spread knowledge and teach the world. Mm -hmm. um, so some classes off the top of my head, you know, and these are with very high profile people. They're generally always busy, but you know, you can trust that I want these classes to be made. I want to learn just as badly as you guys. So these are the ones I'm working on, okay? Um, Ian McKegg, I was just saying. Paula Zane, that digital painting with Paula Zane, you know, Lord of the Rings, uh, Prince of Egypt, um, you know, Leica movies, DreamWorks movies, all sorts of amazing, incredible stuff. Carla Ortiz, after she got off of Doctor Strange. You know, I started working with her on, on her own class. Andrea Blasich, one of my favorite sculptors, um, as well as Justin Gobi Fields, one of my favorite ZBrush sculptors. Um, Carl Kopinski is working on imaginative figure drawing because he just creates realistic, you know, characters and everything, drawings of these characters straight out of his head so I want to learn how to do that as well and Jesper Ising incredible illustrator Magic the Gathering you know epic um, illustrations and that's just a few oh, such a great lineup it's going to be awesome okay uh, so the next question is by Chris Harm um, I was just wondering if there are many people in their late teens at schools and workshops or are they too young no, absolutely not. You know, yeah. like I got my first art job at 17. You are a professional when you start acting like a professional. So does that mean that there's some professionals out there that I don't feel are very professional? Yeah. You know, it's all in your attitude. Um, and maturity doesn't necessarily come with age. Mm -hmm. You know, so just be mature. It doesn't matter if you're 16, 15, 14. You know, you're going to learn way more than you can even handle so it's it's gonna be awesome yeah there was even a girl that was in grade six who attended the seattle workshop last year oh did she come she came with her mom or something her, she came with her dad actually and then yeah it was awesome and her like you can see like potential in her and she really wants to learn so mm -hmm. i think like pe as long as they're eager to eager to learn then I mean, anyone can go. Yeah, it's not like you need to be able to dunk the basketball. Yeah. You know, like you're not tall enough. You're not, you know, if you could pick up a pencil, you got all the equipment that you need mm -hmm. physically to, and you can see, you mm -hmm. know, then you got what it takes to, to start learning seriously. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um, so, okay, now that we're done last week's questions, um, 
the first uh, the first the first question uh, from today is uh, by Hazim. Uh, I heard that you start to make your own personal project and art books to get your work out there. Could you talk about the process of making an art book? Okay, I'm gonna bust through these real quick because we actually just got to today's questions, right? Yeah. Uh, the process of making your own art book, start off with tiny little thumbnails, plan out all your little pages. Um, Kay will actually make a little tiny mini book. So you, we can actually flip through and take a look. You know, attention in the details. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, next question is by Anthony Ross. Hey Bobby, thanks for being here. Will there be an animation course? Oh, we already oh, talked, we talked about, about, about this. Yeah, um, no, right. Uh, this next question is KG, KJP. Uh, when will the tickets for London Workshop be available? I'm not sure at this moment. I'm, I'm assuming January. Mm. Make sure that you go on to the schoolism.com site. You scroll all the way down to the bottom and you click on um, the link there for the newsletter. Okay, so I believe it says... News mm -hmm. tips and freebies. News tips and freebies. Click on that. Join the newsletter, and uh, you'll be notified when we launch uh, mm -hmm. London. Yeah. Um, so the next question is by Dorothy Rudolph. Will the recording of the stream become available on your channel afterwards, in case I need to leave earlier? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question is by Jono. Uh, how? What would you recommend for us to avoid injury based on your experience? Lots of breaks and exercise. exercise yeah. yeah, especially those really nice uh, exercise where it involves m more of your body. Like you go rock climbing, Masay. Yeah. Masay is hardcore. She, <laughs> she'll go rock climbing. She's got crazy grip. Um, I do like yoga and breathing exercises. Uh, and just like remembering to get up, take a bunch of breaks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to set an alarm every hour just to get up and like, I don't know, walk, mm. walk somewhere in the studio. Totally. Okay, next question is by Enrico. Uh, I sh hey, Bobby, I struggle with patience in longer session sessions. I really lack diving in a drawing or painting and let hours pass. After a short, a short time, I hit a point and don't know what to do. It sounds like you're starting to learn. You know, that's how I feel a lot of times when I'm trying to learn something completely new. I get these points where I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. I'm frustrated. Start it all over. Do it again. You know, if you, like I was saying before, you know, you're, you can either take control of your mind or it'll control you. So you got to practice that and take control. You know, like patience and, and willpower is... I've heard before that it's kind of like a gas tank, like it goes down, you know, um, without rest, it'll go down and then it won't, you won't have as much of it. But at the same time, if you're constantly using up your willpower and all that, exercising it, you will get, you'll start to grow your gas tank. So you'll have a longer attention span. Mm. Okay. So the next question is uh, by Paul Russell. What is a good resource for an intermediate artist? It seems like there's a ton of tutorials for beginning artists and advanced artists, but what about those in the middle? I guarantee you, if you try, you know, any of the schools and courses, uh, you'll see why the same class will have people that are hobbyists all the way up to art directors and absolutely high level professionals because it's more about learning how different amazing artists do things. Um, it's not about learning how to paint, how to draw. It's about how does that person paint? How does that person draw? And then you learn from another person that does the exact same thing, but in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. That's how you're gonna get, get to a point where your stuff is gonna be creative and yet based on immense amounts of knowledge and foundation. You know, because you're just gathering all this really great knowledge and foundation and you're piecing it all together and then adding sprinkles of your own ideas on there and then it creates this wonderful, you know, new look. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is by Lucas Mo. 
is all the practice worth it in the in the end do you ever feel like you have no creativity and struggle with pieces that others want to buy you got to find that middle ground mm -hmm. you know there's things that i want to paint that i know nobody's going to buy you know and then there's things that i want to paint that i know yeah most likely people will buy this so try to figure out what is the middle point because there will be a, a part that overlaps you know between what you like to paint and draw what you like to create and what you think people will buy mm -hmm. um so the next question is uh, 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 uh carolina hi bobby and everyone i love so many different styles and materials and themes i know i have to concentrate in only one how do you deal with it? Have you ever already felt that way? It sounds like Carolina needs to take a good chunk of time and focus in on that one thing that she likes, that one style that she likes. You know, do that for like a few months and really get crazy with it, right? Mm -hmm. Until you really, really absorb it mm -hmm. and then move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Rosalia. Uh, Bobby, you mentioned problems with your hand. Do you have any advice how to cope with them? Um, I guess we kind of answered that question. Like exercise. Yeah, and you know what? Everybody's different. You yeah. know, like, I'm not going to say to, like, if, if I don't know. I, this is such a dumb example, but the first one that comes to mind, it's like, Okay, yeah, if, if Masse is saying, oh, my pants are so saggy, and I go, here, take my belt. Well, my waist size might not be the same as hers. <laughs> and then she's like, this doesn't help. And I go, well, it why? Helps it helps me. <laughs> you know, so like everybody's different. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's more like you just try different things and you see what works for you. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is by Paul Russell. What is something that you can do slash watch every day to practice and improve your artwork? Schoolism classes. That's I don't know. That's the first thing that comes to mm -hmm, mind because, me too. <laughs> yeah, when I watch them, you know, when I'm editing, when I'm helping instructors create their classes and stuff, I'm loving it because I'm learning tons. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next question is uh. By Chris, thank you for the answer. Uh, following my previous question, I feel like many times I kind of get stuck in portraits, which kind of are my comfort zone. is quite strange. I'm not sure what causes it. That's okay. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> um, by Res Steve, I'm moving to Toronto soon. Woo! Right on. I'm wondering what you think of the ateliers in that area. I heard the Academy of Realist Art and Academy of Art Canada. What do you think of these programs? I don't have enough knowledge to speak on it. Mm. Um, yeah. Just need a bit of research. Use your logic. Reason. Use your logic. Know what these guys are capable of. Mm -hmm. You know, if they are capable of exactly what you're learning, you're looking to learn, then, you know, if they're great teachers, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, so the next question is by Simon. Uh, what if what advice would you give to someone who's interested in teaching art? How to be a good, good teacher when you're not as good as an artist as Nathan Fawkes? Well, you know, stay on the path of student for life. Mm. That's, you know, like it's okay if you're not super awesome yet and you want to teach. You know, like, uh, the main thing is that whoever you're teaching, you're giving immense value to them, right? So like if you're not that good and you're teaching people that, that are in grade eight or something, then absolutely you can be an awesome teacher. Um, but I do feel like the best teachers are the ones that are really great at what they do. Uh, so the only way you're gonna get there is by constantly learning. Okay, so the next question is um, by T-Rod. I draw, but I have no understanding of fundamentals and have no techniques. So I don't like my drawings. I'm starting schoolism, but where should I start? Is there a curriculum to follow? Um, I, would, I would say just 
go with your instincts and start with whichever one you you like the most because the same kind of thing as the belt analogy i don't know what it is what your goal is Mm -hmm. so i can't really personalize it for you but if you email info at schoolism and you ask and you show your portfolio and you tell what you want to do uh we will actually give you advice yeah we have people that all the time yeah so the next question is by Evelyn, uh, have you ever struggled with your m- mind and, oh, sorry, have you ever struggled when your mind tries to convince you to not do something, kind of creating the illusion that it feels better if you leave the task for later? Yeah, not as much anymore because like like I was saying before, um, you can always train your mind, Yeah. right? Like be on that practice of controlling your mind and not letting it control you Mm -hmm. because it's two different things like your brain is just an organ you know and and it takes you the spirit of you to be able to control it um yeah that's that's kind of like what i would say okay um the next question is by valentina uh through connections i asked my brother's friend to to be my art mentor he goes to brainstorm and teaches me and my friends Should this be a competition? There should always be a competition. But the competition is with yourself. That's that's something I I highly believe in because if you're amongst 10 people and you're the best, but everybody in your group actually really stinks, that just means like you're not as stinky, but you're (laughs) still kind of stinky, (laughs) you know? But if you're always competing with yourself, and all you care about is just being better than yourself, you know, than how you used to be. Mm-hmm. There is no ceiling. There's only, you can just keep going up. You know, and the other thing is, is that when you're on your own path, your own, um, you know, just competing against yourself kind of thing, then you're way more open to spreading the good knowledge and, and you know, teaching others. like. I started, that's exactly what I believe in for so many years. Without that, I never would have, I used to teach people for free on the subways of Toronto for five years. Nobody, I never asked for payment from anybody. It was really just about um, gathering great artists together and just trying, you know, just practicing and doing art together. So it's, we have that support, you know, and if people want to, put in the effort to come and meet me on the subways of Toronto, then I would teach them for free. And that never would have happened if there was a competition thing where I feel like, oh, people are after my jobs and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is by Paul Russell. Uh, I realize that anyone can learn to draw, but is 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 that really true? It seems like there are people that have the gift from birth. Is it really true that anyone can become a master I think anybody can get to a point where they are doing awesome Mm -hmm. at art you know unless you have a true like I don't know some like a huge huge disadvantage like a true crazy disadvantage uh yeah everybody can get to high levels of art whether you can get to the tippy tippy top that's a different story (laughs) okay but i do and you know there are a lot of people where it looks like there's they are you know god's gift to art kind of thing and they were kind of like born with a brush in their hands but it's only because a lot of times they got interested in art earlier on you know, and when you're a kid, you got nothing to do. You got all the time in the world. You can spend all of it learning art. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Murtuza. Uh, how can you start making a small business from your art? There's so many ways. You know, there's Etsy. There's, I don't know. There's like Patreon, Gumroad, yeah. or there's, you know, making prints, selling prints. Um A really nice experience for us that gave us huge education in this this stuff is going to a comic convention, having Mm -hmm. a table, trying to approach people, trying to see how people react to your art. 
that'll give you really good insight. So much of it is um, is in the research. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Nao Wang. Uh, Hi, I'm interested in the $15 subscription course. How long is Nathan Falk's environmental design course, and do we pay for the total fees altogether, or can we pay each month? You pay each month. You pay the full $15 uh, each month, and the great thing about the subscription that's different than the critique sessions is that you can do it at your own time. You know, so for example, there was a housewife, you know, um, I forget where she's from, but she was saying she's a full-time mom, full-time mom, and she can only spend like maybe one and a half, two hours a week doing schoolism classes and just doing art in general. Took her a year to get through the um, painting with light and color with Dice Tatsumi and Robert Kondo. But she was only spending like an hour and a half or two hours a, a week on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. A whole entire year of education, how much did that cost her? It cost her $150. You know, that's pennies really compared to anything else out there. So that's what it's for. Take advantage, use it, keep that learning constant no matter how busy your schedule is, even if it's just one hour a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Sean Russell. Uh, hey Bobby, thanks for hosting these. Can you talk about how you got started on Nico before its amazing success? It was just, uh, it was in my, in my place, I had over a couple uh, old uh, classmates of mine, uh, Jim Bryson, Adam Jeffcoat, big shout out to them. And it was Kay and I, and we're sitting there having drinks, just talking hang out and uh, I told them about this thing that I would do as a child I love comic books and I would stare at these comic books in the backyard and I would just stare at them hard like concentrating trying to mm -hmm. move them trying to make them come alive and I was like if you come alive I will keep your secret I won't tell anybody and they never came alive and then I was like well now with um, with the internet and everything or sorry with iPads tablets and stuff apps we can actually make that happen and so when a child looks at the comic book and goes through it and touches every panel and they just jump to life with sound and everything uh we can totally give that experience to kids now and that's how that idea happened i think we could take just one last okay um by mina roy i work in video game industry uh what to I want to get into animation feature film. I enjoy work more than more when I freelance and properly able to dedicate time to my work and future goals. However, I understand credibility at a company is important. Should I keep working where I am, even if even if it doesn't encompass what I want to do, like stories, or should I go back to freelance? I, I feel like you should go back to freelance, but if you do, you can't just go back to freelance. You gotta go back to freelance with a vengeance. You gotta turn it up a whole bunch of notches. Make sure that you make a splash in the water where everybody feels your ripples, no matter where they are in the world. Mm -hmm. And you keep aiming for that, you know? And then that's, that's how people are gonna find you, I think. But like I was saying before, Mina, is it? Mina. Mina. Roy, yeah. Mina, you're important. You know, you were meant for a purpose. Find your purpose, dig deep, and don't look at nothing else. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and that's all the time we have today. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to Masay for uh, helping me out and always, you know, co-hosting these things. It's always great to have you. Yeah. And uh, so what, when would be the next one? The next one... The next stream, the next stream. Um, well, I don't think we're in next Friday at I work. Think, I think it's half day for us. It's a half day? Ben yeah. was saying it's a half day? Yeah. I think he was saying Friday we have off and Thursday would be a half oh, day. Oh, Thursday's half day, okay. Well, 
you know what, if you go to schoolism.com, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you click on news, tips, and freebies, sign up for the newsletter because that's exactly what it is as well. There are always free educational content with every newsletter that's absolutely free. It's meant for artists, made by artists, made by me, you know, and whoever else. Um, so sign up for that and you'll be notified ahead of time for the next stream. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.